All right, so before we even begin this video, I need to make this incredibly clear. This is not a simple solution. It's not a pick up and go thing that all of you are going to be able to do if you buy a Pico 4 and Quest Pro controllers. It's incredibly clunky and to a lot of people, probably not even worth it. That being said though, it does work. This is just for PC VR. Standalone headsets all run their own mechanics and ways in which they connect to controllers and things like that, and it's all just way too complicated and locked down to even get into standalone. What is up everyone? I'm Mystical. I hope you're all having a fantastic day today, as today I'll be showing you how to connect Quest Pro controllers to basically any other PC VR headset out there. Without any further ado, let's jump right in. Let's begin with the things that you will actually need to complete this. And hold on, because this is the part where it might just become completely inaccessible to most. First of all, you will require a PC. As mentioned earlier, this is PC VR only. However, secondly, you will require some form of a Quest headset that supports Quest Pro controllers. And then thirdly, you will of course require the Quest Pro controllers themselves. And you may be asking yourself, why on earth do we require another headset? Aren't we connecting these directly to a different headset? Well, this is where it gets completely overkill. The way this works is it will disable the Quest headset, whichever one you decide to use on your PC, however, still use its controllers. But because you can't actually connect the Quest Pro controllers to any other device, you still require Quest's device to be the man in the middle. So yeah, while this might not be for everyone, for some, it might still be worth a go. With that being said though, Let's move on to the next part. So who could it possibly be for? For those that might already have some Quest Pro controllers laying around, but are thinking of getting a different higher end PC VR headset, but would like to continue using the Quest Pro controllers because of their many benefits. So how did this come to be? Well, for the longest time, people have been asking themselves the question of, can you connect these standalone controllers to this other headset? Standard Quest Touch controllers make absolutely no sense here, unless their CV1 controllers, simply because you would constantly need the other headset somewhere on your body. And you could probably make them into trackers this way. However, the fact that you need to be connected through something like AirLink means that you still constantly need to have the Oculus software on in the background. That plus the other headset would probably need to be strapped somewhere like your hips in order to be able to track those controllers at all times, as your head is already taken. As you can see, it kind of doesn't make sense. But with the new Quest Pro controllers. Those track themselves, meaning they don't need the headset to see them at all times. The headset can be left off somewhere on the side and you can still be using the controllers and all of their benefits. So when I saw someone recommending I check out Oculus Touch Link in a previous video, they recommended I try it for full body tracking with old Oculus CV1 controllers, which is a great idea. I instead had the dumber idea. Why not use Oculus Touch Link to connect Oculus Touch controllers to a completely different headset? And that's why we're here, <laughs> because of my dumb ideas. So if you guys want to do dumb ideas with me, let me show you how to do those dumb ideas right now. Tutorial time. Okay, so because we are using Oculus Touch Link for this, that is the first thing that we will require on your computer. And the link for that, of course, will be down in the description below. What you will want to do is you will want to download the latest release, which is a .7 zip archive. And you can open that with either WinRAR or 7-zip. Then what you will require is ODTKRA. And what ODTKRA does is it keeps the Oculus runtime active so that the headset doesn't go to sleep or anything like that. It was originally done for the Rift with the proximity sensor. However, we can actually turn off the proximity sensor on Quest devices. So now that we've got the Oculus Touch Link downloaded onto your computer, you can open that up right here and you can see that there's going to be some folders that you will need to transfer here. So you will want to navigate to wherever you have Steam VR downloaded. You can do that by firing up Steam and finding Steam VR on your list of apps to the left here. If you cannot see Steam VR on the list of apps, make sure that you have tools and software selected up in the top left here. And you can right click on it and you can click on manage and you can click browse local files. This will bring you to exactly where you have SteamVR downloaded. Then in here, you will want to go into drivers 
and you will want to drag the Oculus Touch Link folder into the Drivers folder, just like this. I already have it there, so I'm just going to replace it. Then what you will need to do is you will actually need to add that driver to Steam VR. You will want to go back into the Steam VR folder right up here. Then you will want to go into Bin. Then you will want to go into Win64, and here you will find a VR path reg.exe. What you want to do is you want to right click up here, press Copy Address as Text, and then fire up your command prompt. So command prompt. Then what you will want to do is type CD space and paste in that path. Now press enter and you will see that you are in said path. Here you want to type VR path reg space add driver together space and then what you want to do is you want to go back again go into drivers find that folder that you copied earlier and move it over here press enter and this will add that driver into the steam vr registry this is the hardest part of the process and once you have this done you can close out of that however do not close out of this page just yet so now that you have both those things downloaded and you have the steam vr driver installed you will want to connect your quest with the oculus touch controllers to your computer using Oculus Link. Whether it's Air Link or Oculus Link, that doesn't matter. But you will want to have that connected not using Virtual Desktop or ALVR. You want it to be using the standard Oculus software. So let me do that right away. Now inside my Quest Pro, I'm going to uh, select Oculus Link and launch that. Now what you might also want to do is tape over the proximity sensor inside your Quest or Quest Pro so that it doesn't go to sleep. I'm actually just going to use Oculus Developer Hub for this as I have it and there's an option in here to disable the proximity sensor right out of the box. As you can see the Quest Pro shows up here, proximity sensor is now off. Now is also a good time to make sure that your controllers are on and connected and once you have confirmed that they are on you can now launch the following. First of all you're going to want to launch ODTKRA and once that runs you will see that it launches the debug tool and sets everything to the lowest possible stage. Then you will want to go into the Oculus Touch Link folder that we got earlier, and you will want to launch OVR Test and OVR Dummy. Once you have both of those opened, you should notice inside this terminal, I know that there's a lot of terminals on the screen right now, but you should notice in this terminal right here that your controllers should now show as 0x and you can press some buttons, move the controllers around, whatever. Once they're showing up as 0xF, you are good to go. Now, inside this tool here, very, very important, you will want to enable external tracking. If you do not enable external tracking, they won't track. Now, for this all to work, you will also need OVR Space Calibrator. So in case you don't have it yet, now would be a good time to download it. Open VR Space Calibrator, link for this will also be down below. You can get it right off of here. And all you do is you download that and you launch it like you would any other app. And this will install the Steam VR driver and everything for you. And you can see I already have it installed. So make sure to have that set up. And now we are free to jump in to the other headset environment. So let me grab the Pico 4. Okay, so now I'm going to launch Virtual Desktop on my Pico 4, and that should get me connected to the PC. However, there is a problem here. As I said earlier, you can only have one set of controllers connected at the same time, which is going to be quite problematic. So what you want to do is, and this you need to do really fast, so first of all, disable one of your controllers. I'm going to disable the right one first. So uh, by that, I mean take out the battery. And now what you want to do is inside your headset, click launch Steam VR and then quickly take the battery out of this controller. This will launch Steam VR on your computer. However, your Pico 4 controllers will not be connected. And as you can see here on my PC right now, we've only got the two touch controllers connected, which is perfect. That is exactly what we want. But now, if you look at your controllers, they ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. However, if you look at your Touch Pro controllers inside Steam VR, you will notice that they are uh, in a completely different spot over there. So now on your PC, you want to launch Space Calibrator. Uh, so you can see here, we can select Oculus, and then here we can select Oculus Link. Then here we can select the Oculus Quest 2, which is actually the Pico 4, but it thinks it's the Quest 2. That's fine. Then we can select the right controller as the just the one I have here, and you can select very slow. Then click start calibration, put your controller right here, and uh, use the unicorn method. And you do this until the calibration completes. You move your head in a figure eight uh, position, kind of 
the rotation. Sorry, I can't think my brain is rattling right. I have no idea how far along I am in the calibration. And then you will notice that your controller is now in the correct position. Everything is now tracking as it should with Quest Pro controllers working on the Pico 4. And you can see everything is working just as it should be. Positional tracking is working perfectly and I can launch games, I can do everything. So let's play a little bit of Beat Saber, shall we? And see how good tracking is like this. So as you can see, it absolutely does work. And it works pretty flawlessly, just as well as it would work as if you were using the Quest Pro controllers with the Quest Pro or Quest 2 itself. And you may be still asking yourself, why on earth would anyone ever want to do this? Well, the Quest Pro controllers are, as a matter of fact, currently one of my favorite pairs of controllers, right alongside the Index controllers, which have full finger tracking, and that is simply because the Quest Pro controllers track themselves, meaning they have very little occlusion and can be put in places that normal controllers wouldn't be able to be put, because lighthouses wouldn't be able to track them there. That and I overall just like the weight and vibration motors in them, and for me they have been working pretty flawlessly so far. So on my list of controllers, they're probably like my second best. However, I prefer the fact that the Index controllers have full finger tracking, and I just overall kind of prefer the way they latch onto my hands a little bit more. But yeah, it works. I totally didn't expect it to work, but yet here we are, and you can still do it. It's just horribly not worth it, because you end up using two headsets instead of one, and then if you have two headsets, you probably want to play multiplayer with someone, and that other person can't be using this headset at the same time, and you get the drift. It's probably not worth it for most. But we're not here to make practical things work. Some videos on this channel are straight up just because we can. With that being said though, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day or night. If you guys like this one, please do like. If you disliked it, I guess it works too, but let me know why down below. If you guys are not yet part of our community, check out our Discord, check out our Reddit down below where I want to see you posting your spice memes and feel free to discuss any of these topics on that Discord, on that Reddit. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them there as well. Thank you so, so much to all the lovely names going off to my right right now. Those guys are my Patreon and they are helping me out so much. So much love to you guys. And as usual, if you want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, dig my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.